Okay, before we move on, let me show you a couple of things that I would like to customize in the Grasshopper UI. Um, because I believe are things that are going to make our life easier, faster to work with Grasshopper, and better to learn. Uh, it has been my experience as an educator, I've been teaching Grasshopper for many, many years already, uh, that these features or these things that I'm going to change, uh, I believe are going to help you remember and learn a lot of things in Grasshopper much, much faster. Okay, the first thing that I would like to do, and this one is, I know it's a controversial one, and a lot of people have different opinions about this one, but the first thing that I would like you to notice is that this component here, the construct point, is when you go here to the vector tab here, there is this icon here, and also when I hover, in the hover part, there's also an icon that is a description of this component. However, this here, instead, we have a text representation of that component. Um, the world of Grasshopper is divided between people who like text or in their components, or people like me, who like to see, to actually see this icon here on top of the component, which is an option that you can turn on if you go to display here, and if you click on draw icons, then you will make all the components change, and then the component will display this icon as instead of the text representation. By default, if you use Grasshopper as it comes out of the box, you do have text enabled. Um, but it has been my experience that if you are using a visual programming language, you're probably a visual thinker and somebody who has a really good memory for images. Uh, so I believe that it's easier to remember uh, components and it's easier to read definitions to read other people's scripts if you see icons instead of seeing like a lot of text. So if you've never used Grasshopper before, I very, very strongly recommend you that you turn on display and draw icons for two reasons. I think it's going to be best for you. And also if you're going to follow these tutorials, this course, I'm going to be using icons all the time. So it's going to make your life a little bit easier. Nevertheless, because I know the world is divided, there is this wonderful plugin that you don't have if you have uh, just installed Grasshopper uh, in your life. But there's a plugin called Bifocals that what it does is it just adds this small tooltip description of the component on top of it. It's like an automatic thing. So this, I think, is a really, really great tool for people who um, are teaching like me. Uh, and who want to cater to both worlds, people who are text component people and people who are icons people. So um, I'm going to hopefully consistently be using icons throughout this course, but I will hopefully be using bifocal so that you have an additional description of what this component does. It's also, this text is the one that you should input if you double click and you wanna find construct point, this is the text that you should input. So if you're watching these tutorials, you should, if you read, if you don't know exactly where this icon is or how to find it, just go ahead and double click here and type uh, construct point, and then you will find that. Additionally, there's also this option uh, that will help you find components. So if you have a component and you don't know where this component lives, you can click Control Alt and you can see how this information icon shows up. And as you click the component, Grasshopper gives you these arrows that tell you where this component lives. So if you're using somebody else's definition and you don't know where that component belongs to, you can find exactly in a very fast way where this component lives, okay? So this is my main, main big one. I very strongly recommend you do draw icons, but it's something that you have to explicitly turn on, all right? Another thing that I also like is for the exact same reason, uh, you see that these tabs here are all text descriptions of these categories. And also, if you just installed Rhino, you probably don't have um, any beyond this one, beyond display, you don't have any other tabs. These are all plugins that I have installed over the, over the time, right? So for the same reasons, I like these ones, instead of being text, I like them to be icons. So you can right click on the tab and just press display as icons. And therefore, you can now see these icons representing the tabs and you can see some of the plugins also have their own icons, but also it takes much less space. It's much easier to see, at least in my opinion. Another thing that I would like to recommend you is by default, this ribbon only has two rows. 
I kind of like it a little better when it's three rows because it doesn't take much more space, but, um, but I, it gets me to see everything that I have accessible as part of my component toolbox. So I like to expand it one more level. I like having three rows. Uh, so you can do that here by dragging this up and down, your choice, okay? And then the another one, another thing that I would like to recommend you is that by default, uh, Grasshopper comes with this option called uh, Obscure Components that is disabled. What this means is that Grasshopper, for example, here in the vector, in the curves tab, if I go to curves, I can see that um, here, I can only see the pre-visualization of 10 components, but if I drop down, I see that inside of an analysis, there's actually many, many more components. I think this was a decision by the Grasshopper creator to just hide the components that are not very common or that you only would use like once every, every so often. Um, to just like, to just like give you a clean view of the ones that are more popular or more um, used across the, I think the intentions behind that idea were good, but I also think that having a lot of icons here um, and seeing them and being curious about like, oh, what is this icon representing? What is this curve proximity? What is this curve side, blah, blah, blah. I think it's a really good exercise for learning. So I actually do like to see the full palette of all the components showing up there. So I'm going to invite you, especially because you're learning, I'm going to invite you to turn on obscure components so that now we have the full length of like all the components that are available. Um, and again, I think this works pretty well, especially if you are working with icons turn on or your components, because then you can see the link between the components and the tabs. Um, but this is a personal choice. Uh, you get to choose, maybe this is a little too overwhelming at the beginning, but I strongly recommend that you do so that you have like full exposure to everything that is available on your, on your toolbox. Um, another thing that is going to be optional for you is going to be that components, their inputs and their outputs are a very short description, like one, usually one letter. But that is not, that doesn't have to be like that. So if you go to display and you click here on draw full names, you can actually get components and you can get panels and you can get sliders to have like a full length name of what these inputs and these outputs are. Um, this might be good at the beginning, but I think the single letter descriptions are fine. I've never found this a problem. So I'm gonna leave this up to you, but I will have it disconnected, I will have it off during the course of this course. Okay, it's, um, it's, a, it's a choice. And I think that anyway, if you hover over them, you can still read the same information or even better. So um, I'm going to leave that up to you, but I will have it disabled during this course. Um, and then a couple other things that perhaps might be useful or not. You see this thing here, this thing is called the compass. And it's supposed to be this kind of arrow that is telling you where the components that you have selected and where the rest of the components are. I, I'm not sure how this is very helpful. Um, I think this is, has been there since the early times of Grasshopper, but I've never really found use for it. And I believe it actually takes up some resources. So if you're, when you're working with heavy definitions with a lot of components, it's actually taking a lot of com a lot of resources, so I don't like having it in, and I find it distracting. So I'm going to invite you to go to Display, Canvas Widgets, and here in Compass, just to deactivate it, to turn it off. Okay. Uh, I, that's how I'm going to work uh, with my own Grasshopper. And finally, something that I do find useful sometimes, especially when I'm working with big definitions, is that uh, to turn on this thing called the profiler. So in the same section that we were before, display canvas widgets profiler, if you turn this on, the profiler is a component that shows you how many milliseconds each component is taking up to, um, to execute. Uh, here, because this went really, really fast and it's super simple, uh, it took nothing. But, um, but if we use a heavier component, such as, for example, I don't know, let me drop uh, a grid. No, this doesn't work. Let me drop a grid. You see, 
um, here this component took 15 milliseconds to to execute which is nothing it's almost nothing um, but this widget here this is coming from the profiler so I can turn it on and off okay this sometimes helps identify whether if a definition is has like some bottlenecks or if some components are just taking too much and where things could perhaps be optimized. So I think it's a good thing to have. So I'm going to keep it on uh, also for the rest of the for the rest of these uh, of this series. OK, um, and I think with that, um, I think these are all the suggestions that I have on how to customize the UI. Okay.